Hi, welcome back to Module 7 of Networking Fundamentals. We're going to be discussing TCP IP protocols and using them in the command line. All right, so let's take a look at our agenda. All right, so we're going to cover understanding TCP IP, and we're going to do that through protocols, okay? So this is really going to detail more so how to use the protocols and what each of the protocols does. Now, I still recommend that you do a lot of intensive research on each of these protocols because really, each of these could be a course of their own. Now, with that being said, we're going to focus on command prompts and how to use that and some of the basic TCP IP commands. And and some more advanced commands as well. All right, so the command prompt is just a command line interface, and running it as an administrator is known as running in elevated mode. Now, you're probably going to hear this very commonly. It's not something that you should necessarily be concerned about, but it's something that you should want to know. Right now, many tools can be used on the command line. So let's roll into the TCP IP commands and we'll start with the basic ones. IP config is very useful. It displays the current configuration of your install IP stack. And if you use it with the forward slash all switch, it gives you a lot of additional information and that's what you actually see here on the right side of the screen. So that is ipconfig forward slash all in action. Okay. Now ipconfig can also be used to refresh your DHCP, your dynamic host configuration protocol. And also it can be used to change the domain name system setting. What I want you to do now is pause open up a command line prompt and try the IP config and see it for yourself. Alright, so I hope you all have tried the IP config forward slash all command and see it in action for yourself. So let's keep moving along here and discuss ping. Now, ping is another one that you're commonly going to hear about. You're going to hear people say, hey, um, you can ping me later or I will ping you. And that means that they're going to simply send you a quick message, okay? And computers have their own form of that. What ping does is it verifies IP level connectivity to other TCP IP devices by sending an ICNP echo request message. All right, so next is this trace route, all right? And I have a little model here so you can actually see what it looks like. Um, it determines the path that data is going to take to get to its destination, and typically across the Internet or across a wide area network, by sending the same ICMP echo request that was used with the ping, right? But they have an incremental increase in time to live field value. So there's an extra little bit of data that's attached to those ICMP echo requests, right? So basically what you need to know about the trace route command is that um, it traces the path that data takes from the send in to or receiving device. Okay, so what you can do now is open the command line and enter the trace route prompt, prompt and see it for yourself. All right, so we talked about some of the basic commands. Let's talk about some of the more advanced commands. First off, um, the netstat command. Now, the netstat is going to display active TCP connections, so any connection that are currently active on your computer and another computer using the TCP protocol, right? With some specific parameters, of course. Um, this command can actually be used to display not only the TCP connections, but ports on which your computer is listening, and Ethernet stats, and the IPv, um, the IP routing tables, right? So your IPv4 and IPv6 statistics as well. Um, I want you all to stop, okay? Um, open the command line, enter the netstat command, and see it in action for yourself. NBT stat is a command that is going to display net bias over TCP IP statistics for local and remote computers, and also net bias name tables and net bios name cache. Now, if you use it with the hyphen n switch, 
um, you can actually see the names of all the computers on your local area network that you've communicated with. So what you can do now is go over to the command prompt, right? Um, hopefully you still have that open and try the NBT stat space hyphen N command and see what it does for yourself. All right, so next we have PathPing, and this is a command line tracing tool that's very similar to your trace route, except it gives a little bit extra information, right? So it combines um, all the things you love about the ping um, and trace route command, but it gives you a little bit more info. So PathPing shows you the degree of packets lost at any specific router, and it gets into some really good detail because it actually computes the results in regards to each hop based on the packets returned from each router that your data visits on its route to its final destination. Really cool stuff. All right, let's go to the next one, NSLOOKUP. Now, we display information with NSLOOKUP that you can use to diagnose domain name system problems. So we use it to troubleshoot and uh, the NSLOOKUP command line tool is available only after you've installed the TCP IP. So you should definitely be familiar with DNS before you use this tool as well as with TCP IP. Alright, so next we have NetShell, right? NetSH. And this is a command line scripting utility that enables you to display or modify the network configuration of a computer that's currently running. And it provides a scripting feature that allows you to run a group of commands in batch mode against a specific computer. All right, the route command, right? So you can use this command to display and modify entries in the local IP routing table. So your computer has a routing table and your local host has a routing table. And you combine it with the route print command to display routing tables for your machines. Now, this is going to give you the same result as your net stash space hyphen R command but it's gonna be a little bit more commonly used, right? Um, now, you can also use this command to add and delete static routes. All right, we also have the net command, and although not specifically a part of the TCP IP command set, the net command can display various important networking data, and it does enable you to configure various networking options such as services. So I would strongly encourage you to go ahead and learn a little bit more about this command as well. Finally, we have Telnet. Now, Telnet enables you to communicate with remote computers that are using the Telnet protocol. And so you can run Telnet in order to establish communication with other computers, right? Now, typically Telnet is used with passwords and username. And so that's really important for you to keep that in mind that you're gonna actually need to have credentials and authentication values in order to be able to access that device remotely using Telnet. Another thing to keep in mind is that, well, Telnet is really an out-of-date protocol. Um, we've actually switched over to something called SSH, um, Secure Shell. And so we've used that now instead of Telnet. But Telnet is still used, just not as widely as Secure Shell. All right, so that's the end here of understanding TCP IP through the command line. Um, we talked about the command prompt and showed you some basic TCP IP commands and discussed a couple of advanced commands as well. Um, once again, I strongly suggest that you go ahead and take time to do your research with these commands and actually take some time um, and go ahead and experiment with them, use them, right? Because experimentation is the best way to learn something. All right. So again, thanks for joining me um, and I'll see you in the next module.